and he's in a much more vulnerable place there. Um, with a further extradition that is underpinning all of this is the shadow of the United States. And the shadow of the United States is to extradite him to the United States where his future is, to say the least, uncertain. And the justice with which he will be confronted, highly uncertain. In a politically charged case where three or four members of the Republican National Committee of Culture can be assassinated, uh, that's not a healthy environment to conduct an open trial of any kind. Let alone on grounds that they can't even define it. We don't know whether they'll be charged with treason, conspiracy, or espionage. I mean, all these things are open. There is because it's Eastern Australia. And all the other reasons which make it very difficult for the Americans to find a law to prosecute him. Otherwise, they would have charged him already. So, underpinning all of this is the fear that if he stays here, the Americans will come in and make an extradition If he goes to Sweden, which he probably will, then no doubt he'll be subject to the same incredible pressure that the Swedish government will from the United States. Not that they'll resist it heavily, but the killer thinks they're, you know, Carl Rove is a friend of the Swedish Prime Minister. You see no justification. Myself, I don't. What is it? what he's being charged with, or it's apparently being charged with, is are not particular crimes in Britain or America. In other words, he hasn't been charged, but I mean, what he's being that's being alleged about him are not crimes here. You know, whether you, for example, if you have consensual sex, which is the argument over a whole night, and the first six hours are completely consensual. There's then a three-minute section which may not be consensual, and then there's two hours of consensual sex again. I mean, I think that's not serious. No court in the United States of Britain would uphold that for ten minutes. Because there's no intimation of violence or terrible, mis inappropriate behavior, none of that. Uh, but the definition of rape in Swedish law is entirely unique. And he's being charged with something which raises real, real questions about the nature of that law, how it came about, how do you appeal it, when who said what to whom when, it's all that he said, she said, he said, I mean, that's the danger of those right questions, and particularly when there's, when they, the other side admits it was consensual. So what does that mean? I mean, it's the whole thing, I wouldn't say it's a joke, but it's dangerous, because it means that one of the, most, one of the foremost uh, people we have on the question of internet freedom and, and the, the right of the public to know key things in their own interest of public interest as being threatened by some obscure law in a country which is not a law which is not shared anywhere else. And you have to ask yourself the question then, what's that about? I'm not saying that there weren't, there weren't legitimate issues there. There may have been. I don't know. Well, well I suppose we'll hear that in this court. But the real issue is, uh, is what Mr. Assange is famous for. And well, he's not famous for any of this. Nobody ever heard of any of this when uh, his charges were being made. Nobody ever under any circumstances. Sure, it's McFadden, M A C F A D Y E N. Thank you very much. Thank you for your